So this is actually my dad's truck that I'm going to be working on. Birthday's coming up and put a sound system in his truck. So we're going to be changing out all the door speakers and all the tweeters as well as adding an amplifier and subs. And right here we have this Boss Audio Elite stereo. Uh, it has Bluetooth, USB, uh, 240 watts. So the speakers will get some good power out of them. The aftermarket speakers will be installed. So we're going to start out with this Boss stereo that I already talked to you guys about. We have this 10 inch kicker in a truck box that's ported, a 10 inch kicker amplifier to match the sub. Uh, we got these two JVC six by nines that are 500 watts uh, max. Uh, we got these two six and a halfs that are about 300. Uh, these tweeters that I actually had to cut out, I got them from a box I already had. Uh, I had to cut them out because they were round and where these go, it's square. These tweeters that will go in the back. We got an epicenter so he can get the bass from Mexican music because Mexican music really doesn't have bass in it. We got the RCAs, the fuse holder. We got we got the harness that I already talked to you guys also about for the stereo in the truck. And then we have the stereo dash kit as well. And then I'll be providing the power and grounds and all that other stuff myself. I'm also going to be using this board as an amplifier board for the amp and the epicenter uh, as well as these. I didn't show these, but I also need these to cross the epicenter to the amplifier since this one will be getting it from the stereo. And that's the solar stick connectors that I have. It's a 250 piece. This is what they look like. They come in different sizes. This middle piece is a solder part. Uh, these are airtight, watertight whenever they shrink down. I have this tool that I bought to use that to make it easier. And then this is, this is what it looks like after. And then they're really tight. You can pull them and they're not gonna fall apart. I left this blue one like this for if I, if the amp wire that it comes with doesn't turn on the amp, I can just go back and use this. Disconnect it easier having, rather than having to cut them off because these are like a permanent connection and a really solid connection. Uh, the orange one, I just did this because I didn't want to waste a good one if I'm not going to use it. And the ground wire, I have to ground it myself to the truck. The truck harness doesn't come with the ground already. And as for this harness, it also doesn't work. I did all this for nothing. And these don't connect, obviously. As you can tell these plugs are two completely different plugs compared to this. This is what the website said I needed. I ordered and bought. It took my time on all this. The, the harness to the stereo already included, so now I can't even use this anymore. I'm going to end up putting the stereo back. I'm going to do some stuff back here so I can make the sub work at least. But, yeah, I'll probably just come back to it later on if I'm able to find the correct harness and do that. So, like I was saying about the stereo not working and the harness not working, I ended up just using uh, this two-channel lineup converter that I have for the amplifier and subs. Um, I just cut into the factory harness. I found out which one was a left and a right speaker. So my grays go to my left and my whites go to my right or whatever that says. And then I got my RCAs. That'll go back to my amp. Here we got the remote wire to turn it on the amp and then the ground wire. Uh, they both come out from the line out converter. So whatever, wherever you want to hook it up to, I'm just going to hook it up to the amplifier itself. So I'm going to just put the stock stereo back and show you guys when it's done. And here's this factory stereo. Here's the stereo we wanted to put in. And then right here we have the correct harness. It's already all connected. I already connected it, tested it to make sure it was gonna work. Uh, these are the two pins that I needed, two connectors for this one and this one. And as you guys were able to see in the uh, other clip that I'm gonna pull up, uh, it wasn't the same size connectors that I needed and stuff. So now that I have it all ready, I'm gonna be connecting it back in. Uh, I had just done it with the line out converter. Uh, I had the remote and the ground wire. So I have my remote and my ground wire right here. I just connected back the speakers I had tapped into so I could get the line out converter connection. And then since the RCAs were also plugged into here, the RCAs already ran. I have everything tucked, everything hidden. You can't see nothing. So that's the good part that since I had already done the rest of the install that I can just come back in here and then just disconnect everything and then connect the new stereo after I got the correct harness, which is good.
And as you guys can tell, man, that thing was toasted. No life left. These are the back two speakers we took out of his truck. Um, as you guys can tell at a glance, they look pretty, pretty worn out and beat. This one, I mean, you can already see it's creased. It's weak, flimsy, bad. Same thing on this one. The other front tweeter. I mean, they're dust. These are the back tweeters. I'm pretty sure they're fine, but. You know, just had to put some better quality in there for better sound. As you guys can see, here is the remote for the epicenter. This is my power, my remote, and then my RCAs. Can't see where it's coming from. Pop it under. It's wrapped in Tessa tape. Still can't see it. It comes up to the top where the stock stereo is at. So yeah. Right here we got the ground cable. This ground side goes to the amplifier, it plugs in, it's a wire ferrule. And then we got the terminal side, wherever it gets grounded to on the chassis. We got a copper fitting along with the shrink tool. All that, so everything's done. I'll show you guys a video of how it sounds like, but let me show you guys the amp board. And this is the amp board. As you can see, everything goes through a little hole throughout the back, so there's no wiring up front. It's gonna be mounted right here. Uh, you can still see some of the wire right now, but I'm not done. I just wanted to show you guys what it would look like. This is what it's gonna look like once I mount it on there, and I'll show you guys after that. But yeah, it's pretty clean. I like how everything just comes out through the back. Through the back, they're not just mounted to the floor or under the seat or whatever, it's actually on the board, and yeah. So it's a good thing that I kept on looking for the stereo harness. If not, I would have never came across it. And my dad would have ended up with stock stereo, which isn't no fun. No one wants that. Doesn't have Bluetooth. Doesn't have these fancy colors. Doesn't show you the name of the song you're listening to. And with this stereo, it does. So that's good. Uh, I'm glad I kept looking and I came across it. So I'm happy with that. The other day, I was pretty upset that I wasn't able to find it. I'm all like, bro, why wouldn't they send me the right one? Why can't I find the right connection? And then I kept on looking and looking and bam, found it just like that.